Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Mike here at Game from Scratch, and we live in spoiled times. I gotta say, it's amazing the number of tools that are out there are available for game developers. And even more impressive is when new free ones come along. And yesterday, a new free tool called Materialize was just released, and you're gonna be amazed at just how polished and powerful this tool is. Now, what exactly is it for? Well, basically, it's all about taking images and turning them into materials. Now, in this day and age, a material is getting more and more complex. It's composed of a number of different maps, things for normal maps. Maps, diffuse maps or color maps, um, ambient occlusion, height maps, all these things go together uh, under modern game edges to create more realistic and lifelike materials. But the process of creating them has gotten more and more frustrating. Now, there are a bunch of tools out there for handling exactly what Materialize does. In fact, there's a commercial one called Substance B2M. Uh, this is several hundred dollars. It's part of the Substance pack. I think it's 200 bucks, so not several, but it is a commercial product. Uh, there's also Shader Map, which does the same thing and there's mod lab which is a free one that i covered in a, a while back but today what we are looking at is materialized from bounding box software now this guy is as i mentioned earlier free now i i get requested to mention this up front and i always forget to do so but i hate to tell you right now linux users mac users you are out of luck this is only available currently uh for windows 64 bit so uh, I'm not sure how these shader packs work. It might be able to work within those engines, but um, yeah, this is a Windows only tool. So you are a bit out of luck, but the entire kind of premise behind it is you can use the diffuse to generate height, metallic, smoothness, normal, and then use normal to kind of generate edge occlusion, etc. So basically, uh, as you generate more maps, you can make more maps out of it. And if you have multiple maps already defined, so for example, if you already have a height map, you can just load your height map and use the existing one. On top of that, it does things like tiling your textures, which is normally a pain in the butt. And it can also be used for making rapid tweaks to a texture you've got. So uh, it's just a Swiss Army knife tool for generating textures. Now when you go ahead and grab it, it's a zip file, just extract it out and then run materialize within the file. It's it's small, it's like 20 megs in size. And here you can see materialize, we'll let that load up, it takes a split second. And here we go, here's the primary interface. Um, and one thing I find a little confusing is everything springs from the diffuse map, but it's the second item on the list. And this list is not alphabetical and doesn't make any sense to me for it to be a uh, second item as opposed to the first, but minor quibble. So what you do is come on in here, go to your diffuse map. Uh, that is basically your texture, your color texture. And I'm using one I downloaded off the web. So I'm just going to get over here and grab this manhole cover. And there you see it in action. Now, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail about how to use this guy uh, because you can actually go over to their tutorial sections and see a few. Uh, oh, actually, they did a sewer cover. So exactly what I'm about to do now, they document the process and go through each of the tweaks and the settings that I'm not going to deal with. Now, one other thing I didn't mention earlier on is Materialize was actually used on the Uncharted collection to generate the metallic smoothness and occlusion textures when updating Uncharted 1 and 2 for the collection. So this is a battle tested product. All right, so back over to the tool. Nothing spectacular happening so far. That is quite literally just a manhole cover texture. Now this is being textured in 3D. So you can see here uh, with the right mouse button, I can orbit around and we can see it. Now right now, I just have a diffuse texture. So there's nothing going on here. There's no light reflections. There's no normal mapping or height mapping or anything else. So it's just a flat texture on a flat surface so far. Now we can actually go into this guy, click edit, and we can change the default diffuse behavior. So this is one of those things you would normally have to go into an image editor in order to make these kind of modifications. And you can do things like um, change the contrast. So if you want to have it a little bit more severe, you can do so. Uh, you can do a little bit of a blur on it. Uh, you can do an overlay blur contrast. So, and you just kind of play around with the settings. Each setting is interactive, so you can see the direct result as you're using it. Now this one here, it's kind of cool. This shows your kind of before and after. Um, reveal. And then when you're happy, you just basically go ahead and set that as your diffuse channel. So now you've edited and modified your diffuse layer. And now we can go ahead and create a height map layer. So we're going to go over here to height map. Now height map is like a black and white rendition uh, where black is going down, height is coming up. Or sorry, white is coming up, black is going down. So you see here, the dark areas are going to be recessed. The lighter areas are going to come up vertically. And here you can see on the left hand side, um, or the, well, the right hand side, there is our uh, diffuse as being modified. Now I'm going to say we're going to use the, we can choose between the original diffuse channel or the one we edited. We're going to go with the one we edited. And then once again, here you can see there is a slider option that illustrates the, uh, 
that that over here is the height texture we're working on. And you can come through here and you change the frequency weight. So you can do a, like if I want to do displace, details, default. Now this is going to give you a really granular level. It's going to look a little bit strange to you. So what you probably want to do is come up with a bit of a softer one here and then you can change the contrast. So if you want like the background to be quite dark, so if you want it to really recess, you can do like that. So your height map will be quite recessed down there and we can play around with a few of these settings like that until you get something that you ultimately are happy with. Uh, you can also change to have the cracks showing up. I'm going to go to the default. Again, placement, details, default. So I'm going to go back to this place. Uh, let's do final gain. Let's fuzz that down a bit. And then we can actually go ahead and we're good with that. So we've just created it. So we now have a height map and we can go show full material. And there you can see now our height map in action. So I could come back here again and which one is it? So this is copy, paste. So that's P is paste, C is copy, O is open, S is save. Uh, but since, okay, let me just figure out how to do this. I, I don't know where edit went. I guess I have to just create it again. So I can go clear, we can go create, and we could give this guy, so if I do the full on displace like that, or sorry, details, so it's, there's a really, really strong, and we'll give it a stronger bias that uh, and then we'll set that as the height map now when you'll see it in action so you see it's it's really pronounced what it's doing there and that is obviously not what you want so that's why you're going to want to play around with the settings particular so we're going to just go ahead and clear that guy out again we'll recreate it as you see the process of actually creating it is just trivial we'll just go straight up this place that that's actually probably fine right there so we'll go show full material and there you see so you're getting the illusion of height where there really is none which is actually pretty sweet um, so we are part way towards creating our texture so all we started with was a diffuse map. Now we have a height map. We come in here, we can create our normal map. This one's pretty straightforward. It's almost always just a matter of just clicking normal. There's a ton of programs out there for creating a normal from a surface. Um, again, this one actually doesn't work. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Maybe it's, yeah, I'm not sure what that particularly is all about. Uh, but we can go ahead and change. We can have a crisp normal map we can smooth normal map, mids. Mids looks about right. And then you can change various different values here. You can change your final contrast until you get something you can. So if you want to be a little bit more muted. And then you can set that as your normal map. Then once again, here is the final result now with normal map in. And you see you're getting a real realistic looking cobblestone street and um, this manhole cover here in like almost no work. It's just absolutely awesome. And then what we've got in this day and age is now with the PBR workflow, metallic maps are also becoming more and more common. Hey, let's create one of those. And yeah, that's all you need to do. And then once again, you come in here, kind of, you can play around with it. You can do a color pick to set the baseline on it. So pick color. Thought that was it. Hmm. Thought I could pick the color over there. I might be missing something there. Uh, so we're using the edited diffuse. Normally you can, oh, there we go. So there's just no UI update. So there we're, we're picking basically what our metal, metalness color is. Um, we can change it out. I'm not actually that familiar with how metalness maps work. So let's, uh, let's set that out and see what it looks like. That's not bad, a little over shiny, but uh, so there you saw we created our metalness map and you can just kind of keep going. You can go ahead and create a smoothness map and we'll be boring, just create straight up one. Edge mapping, and again, and tweak all the various different settings so we could do soft, tight, let's do tight. Set as edge map and ambient occlusion map. And here you basically create the power. So this is how your lighting is interacting. So pixel spread. Uh, some depth, um, normal and blend normal and depth AO. I'm not sure what that setting particularly does. Again, there are a set of tutorials that will take you through this process exactly, but we'll call that our ambient occlusion map. Now I'll go ahead and show the full material. Here you see there's the lighting interacting off it, the metalness map from the channel we set. So our metal looks, so we have the shiniest, uh, newest, overwhelmingly powerful, metal going on there but you can see we've got depth going on we've got texture going in from our normal map and our height map we have uh the lighting the interaction of the lighting on the metal just 
looks flawless. It's, it's just amazing, this program, to be honest. Uh, we've also got post-processing options here, so we can do uh, bloom, uh, bloom amount. This is configuring the basically the interaction of our environment here. We can do a, a lens flare if you really, really want, vignette. So you see it coming in on the, the outside, kind of shows the, the environment, the rendering settings that we're seeing our scene in. And we can close that one out. Uh, we can also tile our maps, as I mentioned earlier on. This is uh, a very common requirement. So you see here, we can yink, yink. So we're tiling a bunch of maps together, texture tiling. I don't actually want to do that. Let me also splat them like so. Uh, I don't need that. Can I undo that? Head on back over there. So you do have the ability to generate your tile maps right here, or I can just click right here and just undo all of the lovely work we've just done. And now that you're done with um, creating this, again, you've got a game ready texture in seconds with all of the maps created. You can see it, it just looks sharp. I, I'm amazed that this tool was completely free to be honest. And then once you're good to go, you come up here, you can pick your, um, your texture format to go out. So if I want to save these out as PNG, you see we've got a uh, bitmap. Now, of course, bitmap doesn't necessarily have um, transparency, so do be aware of that. Um, or you can save out property maps, red, green, blue, separately. Uh, so when you're done, you can also say flip my normal out. You can save this project, so load back in. So if you were working on something and you're not quite done, you can save it and come back. So there's my PNG. I'm going to save my project. We'll save that out to the desktop. We'll call it... Uh, 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 what the heck is that thing called? Manhole. Manhole cover. And save that. And then we come here, look at our desktop, and you will see it generates our normal, our smoothness, our metallic, our edge map, our diffuse map, our ambient occlusion, and our diffuse and height. And then, of course, our original. And then this guy gets created as well. I'm not entirely certain what that is. That might actually be their file format. Yeah, that's their, their native file format. So if you want to open this guy back up, you can. And that's kind of it. And it is amazing. I, again, I'm, I'm just shocked at how good this looks and how well this works. You'll see down here, you've got to click here. It shows you the controls for navigating the world view. Uh, you can click that again to get rid of that. We've got some settings options here. So you can switch between Mac style and Maya style normals. Um, you also set your default file format. So if you don't want to keep changing this all the time, uh, there's full screen, it's disabled, not really sure what to do about that. Um, suggestion feedback over here, and you can also hide the GUI. So if you want to just look at your generated texture, that is an option. And again, I am staggered by just how awesome this free tool is. And I, I hope you're just as impressed as me, because this is <laughs> really cool stuff. And this is stuff that isn't fun to work with. Trying to get your textures to look just right is never fun, especially when you're doing a bit of a workflow where, say, you've got... Photoshop or your image editing tool open and then you make a tweak to the one map and then you got to load it into your environment and see how it looks in the end. It's nice to have it all here in one place with this real time feedback and you can see exactly what you're creating as you're creating it. And as you saw from what we just did, we did this in a matter of just seconds and I didn't even really get into the details going on here. And I do wish we could edit. That's one of those things that my only regret, my only feedback, other than that the diffuse map should be on the far left, is the only one we can jump back in and edit is the diffuse channel. Otherwise, you have to recreate it. So you can't get your old settings back. Um, so I do wish there was an ability to to edit. Now, what happens if I click? Does that bring back my old settings or does that reset it? I'm not sure, actually. Uh, but that is, uh, that, yeah, that is Materializer. I, I just... I'm amazed at Materialize it and what it is capable of. And, um, you know, I'm gushing a little bit in this video, but uh, I hope you can see why. This is this is really impressive stuff. All right. And so, again, completely free. Unfortunately, only available for Windows. But, uh, you know, it, when you're getting a free tool like this that is this polished and this capable and this kind of life-changing, if you are working in this space, if you are creating materials and you don't have access to something like B2M, uh, materialize is a gift from the heavens. So I, I hope you guys found this as interesting as I did. Of course, the links will all be down below. And uh, kudos to Bounding Box Software for making such a cool tool uh, available completely free. All right, that's it for now. See you all later. Goodbye.